Welcome to the video version of the Passover Seder found on Elliot.com slash Passover Service dot HTML. The purpose of the video is to help those who are new to practicing the Passover service as well as provide a video resource for those wanting to implement the Passover service found at Elliot.com. And it's certainly my sincere prayer that this will be a blessing to you and to all of your households. Hallelujah. Now, the items that we're going to need for tonight's service will be unleavened bread uh, that can be made just with flour and water, wine or grape juice. Uh, we like to squeeze our grapes for our grape juice. And then basins for feet washing and towels. And then we like to wear sandals in the spirit of this observance and also staffs for having the staff in hand as you can see behind me today uh, I have this staff and I'm ready to leave Mitzrayim how about you hallelujah and then uh, a rope or belt for girding our loins that's one of the things that show our preparedness and ready to go and then plates and glasses for the unleavened bread and fruit of the vine and then myrrh for a bitter herb and then a copy of the scriptures for everyone, of course. Now, we eat this Passover, um, but we don't want to come to it hungry, according to 1 Corinthians 11.34. And so, we've already had a regular meal prior to the service. Now, we, uh, we have sandals and shoes on our feet, staff in our hand, rope and belt around our waist, ready to go. And this symbolizes our willingness to quickly leave Egypt, that is, this world, and the sin which enslaved us, and partake of the Lamb of Yahweh who saves us from death. Hallelujah. Now, we start the service. Um, I think it's a good idea to start the service uh, first by the feet washing. And that kind of prepares our hearts and keeps us humble and preparation, the partaking of the body of Messiah and the fruit of the vine, the, the blood of Messiah. Now there are a number of scriptures um, which show this washing of feet was a very common act, particularly before entering the tent or entering a house after a long journey. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 1, it says, Then Yahweh appeared to him by the terebinth trees of Mamre, and he was sitting in a tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground. And said, My master, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Please let a little water, little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree and I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your hearts after that you may pass by and as much as you have come to your servant they said do as you have said now in ancient times the sandals were worn and in light of this we could see a need for someone to have the dust and the dirt from their feet to be washed off periodically and particularly before entering a home. And in fact, the uh, Bible Encyclopedia, International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, says that in the case of ordinary people, the host furnished the water and the guests washed their own feet. But in the richer houses, the washing was done by a slave, and it was looked upon as a very lowly service, according to 1 Samuel 25, 41. 
This, help, this may help us to understand why Yahshua chose one of the lowliest of services to demonstrate the importance of humbly serving one another. Now in Luke chapter 7 and verse 36, it says, Then one of the Pharisees asked him, as Yahshua, to eat with him. And he went into the Pharisees, he went to the Pharisees' house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner. And when she knew that Yahshua sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil, and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Yahshua answered and said to him, to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he said, Teacher, say it. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed him five hundred denarii, the other fifty. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, You have rightly judged. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Now in Yahshua's gentle rebuke, we see him encouraging this act of humbleness and service. And we see it again in John 13, where Yahshua washes the feet of his disciples on the night of Passover. In John 13, verse 1, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Yahshua knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Yahshua, knowing the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from Elohim and was going to Elohim, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that he poured water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with a towel with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Master, are you washing my feet? Yahshua answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will know after this. And Peter said to him, You shall never wash my, wash my feet. Yahshua answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Shaman Kepha said to him, Master, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Yahshua said to him, He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are, all clean, you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore he said, You are not all clean. So when he washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he, t he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and master, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your master and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who sent greater than he who sent him. 
If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. So we see here that Kepha was amazed that Yahushua the king would even want to wash his feet because it is such a lowly service and at first he refuses to let Yahushua wash his feet but then Yahushua says something very interesting he says if I do not wash you you have no part with me now why would he say that there is there some spiritual meaning here and uh, we know that Kepha has said don't even not only wash my my feet but also my hands and my <clears throat> my head also and so one interpretation would be this you know that we are made clean in our baptisms and it's someone who is in the body of Messiah who is actually doing our baptism for us well once we are cleansed you know there's the, the potential of our feet being dirtied by the world's influence as we walk on this journey as some places we'll need to sh even shake off the dust of our feet as a testimony against their practices well when we are cleansed in Yahshua the Messiah our feet gathers that dust and we are in need of rest and in need of cleansing and so we as brothers and and fellow believers the body of Messiah need to bear one another's burdens and wash one another's feet in Yahshua helping one another overcome the world which seek continually seeking to to defile us and so Yahshua just as he is in the person doing our baptism is in each one of us cleansing us of those stains and so the washing of one another's feet appears to be symbolic of Yahshua's cleansing of those stains and uh, Yahshua said if I do not wash you you have no part with me and so Yahshua came as a servant to all of us and we have that that cleansing it does take the heart of a servant to reach out and cleanse one another and in the washing of another's feet we learn and participate in this humble service and so at this time let's go ahead and wash one another's feet you'll choose someone in the group to participate with and if you desire pray for the person that you are washing and uh, ask Yahweh to bless them and forgive them and heal them and have mercy on them and um, you can go ahead and put hit the pause button on this video until you're completed with the washing of one another's feet okay that concludes our foot washing service now we're going to go into the master's supper or the Passover meal as we know that we believers are Yisrael and Egypt represents the sin laden world that we live in and all its glory and all of us were in bondage at some point to, to Egypt to Pharaoh and in slavery to the adversary whom Pharaoh represents uh, while we were in our sins. Satan is a ruler and the god of this world, as it said. Uh, Satan also tries to destroy the predestined children of Israel, that's us, lest we be large in number and prevent us from going and having a feast unto Yahweh. Now the taskmasters, perhaps symbolic of demons, afflicted those who were in bondage well we also were afflicted weren't we when we were in slavery to Egypt well Yahweh heard the cry of the children of Israel who desired to be delivered from their bondage Exodus chapter 3 verse 7 and Yahweh said I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters for I know their sorrows 
So we also knew the bondage that sin had brought upon us. We also cried out to Yahweh. And Yahweh delivered us in the same manner he delivered Israel from their bondage. Now Pharaoh did not want them to go. Same is true of the enemy. Satan does not want us to serve Yahweh. He wants us to remain in service to him and in bondage. And so he tries to prevent the people from worshiping Yahweh. Now the Egypt, <clears throat> the people of Egypt, we know, worshiped idols. And in many ways, the people of this world worship idols. But Yahweh showed some, some of them, all of them, the superiority of him over the dumb, dumb idols by sending the ten plagues. The first plague, there was the water coming from the Nile, uh, turning to blood for seven days. Pharaoh would not heed them, as Yahweh predicted. In the same way, Yahweh has revealed to us his superiority over the gods of this world, whether it be lust, pride, drugs, money, whatever. Whatever sins may have come between us and Yahweh. But then, then there were other plagues in Egypt. There were frogs, lice, flies, disease on their animals, boils in, on men and animals, hail, locusts, and thick, thick darkness. And in each of these plagues, Yahweh spared the area of Egypt that the, that the Israelites dwelled in. Now the last plague was a very important one. We're going to read about that one in Exodus chapter 11. Yahweh told Pharaoh through Moshe. Moshe said, Thus says Yahweh about midnight, I will go out in the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the female servant who is behind the handmill, and all the firstborn of the animals. Then there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as was not like it before, nor shall be like it again. But against none of the children of Israel shall a dog move its tongue, against man or beast, that you may know that Yahweh does make a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Now Yahshua the Messiah is referred to as the Lamb of Elohim. And even before his ministry, he was called the Lamb by John the Baptist. It says, The next day John saw Yahshua coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of Elohim who takes away the sin of the world. Now other times in Scripture, Yahshua is referred to as the Lamb. Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne the living creatures, and the elders. And the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb, who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom, and strength and honor, and glory and blessing. So he is called the Lamb, and actually he is called our Passover in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Therefore purge out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, since you truly are unleavened. For indeed Messiah, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. And so in the washing of one another's feet, we are preparing our hearts to have the kind of humbleness needed to partake of the Messiah, our Passover. Now let's read... Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. We're going to read through this chapter. It says, Now Yahweh spoke to Moshe and Aaron and the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth day of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him, t let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons. According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. 
you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it between the evenings. And so we see um, Yahushua, um, he entered Jerusalem um, after the tenth day of Aviv. He entered on, on the eleventh of Aviv. He was examined. He was questioned. In the same way they would uh, examine and make sure the Passover lamb that Yahweh had provided was totally without blemish. And they would kill him between the evenings on Aviv 14. And that's the exact hour Yahshua died for us. Continuing on. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it with bitter herbs. And so, um, at this time, we want to go ahead and partake of the bitter herbs. Um, and that, in most cases, for those of you following this service, would be myrrh. And I will let you go ahead and pause the video at this time. And when you have completed that, uh, just replay the video. All right, continuing on here in Exodus chapter 12. It says, regarding the Passover lamb, Do not eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it, with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand, so you shall eat it in haste. It is Yahweh's Passover. And it's for that reason that we partake of the Passover with, as it says here, staff in hand, sandals on the feet, eating it in haste. And so, um, and we got the belt around our waist. And so, this is to signify the haste with which we must depart from the sin and bondage that previously enslaved us. So I'm getting my staff here ready to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. And in verse 12, For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am Yahweh. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So this day shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to Yahweh, throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. Now Israel is Yahweh's firstborn. We, Israel, are also spared by the blood of the Lamb. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses. For whoever eats, eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation. And on the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation for you. No manner of work shall be done on them, but that which every one must eat, that only may be prepared by you. 
So you shall observe the Feast of Unleavened Bread, for on this same day I will have brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations as an everlasting ordinance. In the first day of the, on the fourteenth day of the month, at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the twenty-first day of the month, at evening. For seven days no leaven shall be found in your houses, houses, since whoever eats what is leavened, that same person shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he is a stranger or a native of the land. You shall eat nothing leavened, in all your dwellings you shall eat unleavened bread. Then Moshe called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take lambs for yourselves according to your families, and kill the Passover lamb. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lentil in two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out the door of his house until morning. For Yahweh will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lentil and on the door, two doorposts, Yahweh will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. And you shall observe this thing as an ordinance for you and your sons forever. And it will, come, it will come to pass when you come into the land which Yahweh will give you, just as he promised that you shall keep the service. And it shall be when your children say to you, What do you mean by this service? And at this time, next two scriptures and uh, I will go ahead and give you time to do that and go ahead and hit the pause button on the video again and uh, any explanation that you want to give to the children uh, including these scriptures and then um, go ahead and read these scriptures first Okay, and then an adult may say, and read with me, The Messiah is our Passover, and we have been spared from death. Yahweh has delivered our households by the blood of the Lamb. There are other homes in our areas that do not have the blood of the Lamb. But praise Yahweh for His great deliverance and His great act of love for us. So just as the children of Israel did upon hearing this, let's all bow our heads and worship Yahweh. At this time we'd like to sing, many of you would know this hymn already, Psalm 103. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Continuing in Exodus chapter 12, verse 28. Hallelujah. Then the children of Israel went away and did so, just as Yahweh had commanded Moshe and Aaron, so they did. And it came to pass at midnight that Yahweh struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of livestock. So Pharaoh rose in the night, he, all his servants, 
and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Then he called for Moshe and Aaron by night, and said, Rise, go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go, serve Yahweh as you have said. Also take your flocks and your herds, also, as you have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the Egyptians urged the people that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, We shall all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leavened, having their kneading bowls bound up in their clothes on their shoulders. Now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moshe, and they had asked from the Egyptians articles of silver, articles of gold and clothing. And Yahweh had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they granted them what they requested. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. Now when we come into the promised land, and Yahshua leads us there, it's written that all the wealth of the Gentiles will be ours. In Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 2, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of Yahweh has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But Yahweh will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around, and they shall, and they, and see. They shall all gather together, they shall come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, your daughters shall be a nurse at your side. Therefore your gates shall be open continually, as it says in verse 11, skipping down here. And they shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles and their kings in procession. For the nation and kingdom which shall not serve you shall perish, and those nations shall be utterly ruined. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the pine, the box tree together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. Also the sons who afflicted you shall come bowing to you, and all those who despised you shall fall prostrate at the soles of your feet, and they shall call you the city of Yahweh, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, so that no one went through you, I will make you an eternal excellence, a joy of many generations. You shall drink the milk of the Gentiles, and milk the breast of kings. You shall know that I, Yahweh, am your Savior, and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze. Instead of stones, iron. I will also make your officers peace and your magistrates righteousness. Violence shall no longer be heard in your land, neither wasting nor destruction within your borders, but you shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun shall no longer be your light by day, nor for brightness shall the moon give light to you. But Yahweh will be to you an everlasting light, and your Elohim your glory. Your sun shall no longer go down, nor shall your moon withdraw itself. For Yahweh will be your everlasting light, and all the days of your mourning shall be ended. Also your people shall all be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, Yahweh, will hasten its time. Blessed be Yahweh, who will hasten its time. Let's turn our attention now to the partaking of the Passover. Knowing that Yahshua is our Passover, let's remember the words 
that he said in John 6:48, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us flesh to eat? Then Yahshua said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead, he who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? When Yahshua knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. And so the word of Yahshua is spirit. It is life-giving bread for us. John 1.14 says Yahshua is the word of Elohim made flesh, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We will now read aloud the account of Yahshua's instructions to partake of the bread and the fruit of the vine. Mark 14:22, And as they were eating, Yahshua took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Assuredly, I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of Elohim. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Now Matthew 26, verse 26. And as they were eating, Yahshua took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until I drink it that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Again, Luke 22, verse 15, And he said to them, With fervent desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of Elohim. Then he took the cup and gave thanks, and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of Elohim comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. 
And then we see a account of this same act in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, where Paul is speaking. He says, For I received from the Master that which I also delivered to you, that the Master Yahshua on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Master's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Master in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Master. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. All right. At this time, we will partake of the unleavened bread. Uh, you want to give thanks to Yahweh for that in, in prayer and for who it represents, asking Yahweh's blessing, and then break the bread and pass a piece to each person at the table, and then repeat Yahshua's words where he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And we'll eat it in haste. Yahshua is our Passover, which was sacrificed for us. And you can go ahead and hit the pause button and then when you're done, you can hit the play button again. Now notice that after partaking of the unleavened bread, which is dry, we thirst. And in the same way we read the word of Yahweh, uh, we see our sin, and we also have a thirst for redemption. And so we have the need for Yahshua's atoning blood, which is symbolized by the fruit of the vine. And so at this time, we're going to go ahead and partake of the fruit of the vine, give thanks to Yahweh for it and for who it represents, Yahshua, asking Yahweh's blessing, and divide it among each person present for the service and say <clears throat> that Yahshu has said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Assuredly, I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you, when the kingdom of Elohim comes. And I'll give you time to go ahead and pause the video and you can partake of the fruit of the vine. Okay, praise Yahweh, and we know they, they sang a hymn afterward, and so we're going to do that from Psalm 103. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. 
We will now read and meditate from the words of this awesome psalm, so much of which relates to the Passover. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Yahweh executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moshe, his acts to the children of Israel. Yahweh is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so Yahweh pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of Yahweh is from everlasting to everlasting, on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those who remember his commandments to do them. Yahweh has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless Yahweh, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless Yahweh, all you hosts, all you his hosts, you ministers of his, who do his pleasure. Bless Yahweh, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless Yahweh. O oh, my soul. And at this point, I encourage those of you who are listening to the brought to this uh, Passover service to conclude your service tonight with a word of prayer as we close out this Passover service today. Thank you for participating, and may Yahweh be with you as you enjoy the remainder of this Feast of Unleavened Bread. Our holy King, we 